Hey guys, and welcome back to Mika React New Views, where we react new to things on the internet. Same day, same shirt, different video. And today we're returning to Joe Rogan and Bill Maher. And the title of this video is Common Sense, which is not so common. Anyway, we're gonna go right into it, but before you do for like this type of videos, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to get the notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, you can donate. My PayPal me link is in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course, it helps, but you don't have to. You can just like, comment, subscribe. And another great way to support this channel is either join my brand new membership program, different levels, different tiers, different perks, or visit my brand new merch shop. Links down below. And the links to all the internet platforms, my socials, and all the ways to support me is in the links down below. Other than that, sit back relax and enjoy it. The video. All right, here you go. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Well, I think it's because we are both seen as people who are sort of like commonsensical. And that yes. is what there is a hunger for, I think, in America more than anything, is common sense. Yes. The uh, Away from the extremes, I mean, when people say to me, you know, you're, uh, don't you think you've gotten more conservative? No, I haven't. The left has gotten goofier. Yes. So I seem more conservative, maybe, but like... It's not me who changed. Yes. I feel I'm the same guy. But five years ago, uh, you know, we hadn't spent six trillion dollars to stay home. I mean, I understand we had to do something with the pandemic. I'm not sure that was, you know, I mean, I remember when a trillion dollars was too much to spend on anything. We didn't spend a trillion to bail out the yeah. economy in 2008. Um, so we didn't do that five years ago. No one was talking about abolishing the police, you no. know, there was no talk about, uh, you know, <laughs> pregnant men, and, <laughs> you know, I mean, there was just, <laughs> looting was yeah. still illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't there, that crazy? There was just, there's, so like, have I changed? No, because if someone had said 20 years ago, I, I, I'm not sure looting is a bad thing, I would have opposed it then. Yeah. See, I, so I haven't changed. But that, I think, is what there is this hunger for, is this sort of common sense. I, you know, centrism is such a wishy-washy word. But that's sort of what it is. Some people lean a little more to the left, a little more to the right. Sometimes it's issue by issue. But just, you know, I'm always saying to the Democrats, just don't be the party of no common sense. And you will be surprised at how much amazing <laughs> success you will have yeah. as opposed to what's going to have happen, which is they're going to get their ass kicked in November. Stopping it there. Alrighty then. Yes, uh, common sense or critical thinking skills. So the conversation with Bill Maher, especially on the right, um, has been that is he serious or is he grifting? Does he just see the writing on the wall and knows that the left is going down and dumpster fire and flames and he's just getting out as quick as possible? I think this has always been Bill Maher. Bill Maher has always just said how he felt. And he's not always been he was never afraid to go against the grain. Bill Maher, I feel like, famously was very like anti-religion, anti-church. He came out with that whole like atheist documentary a while back. And you you might forget that at some point, religion and conservatism and ch the church had a more of a voice in the mainstream. That was sort of more of a popular stance at some point. I mean, it was a while ago, but it was there, and he was not afraid to go against the church, even though that, at, that at that time, the church seemed to have a bit more pull and stuff like that, when it, even when it came to entertainment, like censorship. Like the people who liked censorship back then were the church moms, were the sur suburban moms, were the conservatives who wanted to censor sex and cuss words and violence and, you know, violent video games and, and rap music and rock music and stuff like that. So, like, they were, they had a little bit more power then that they do now. He's always been a contrarian. He's always been his own man who said what he wanted to say. I think just because someone has liberal ideas or ideas that seem to be more of a liberal talking point or leftist or progressive or democratic talking point doesn't necessarily mean that person is a liberal, progressive, a leftist or whatever. And just because someone has talking points that's more espoused by the right or conservatives or Republicans doesn't mean that person is a conservative or Republican like as I Myself. I'm not a conservative and I'm not a Republican. Trust me, if you think I am and you follow me for that reason, I will disappoint you at some point. <laughs> but I'm not a progressive either. If anything, I'm a moderate 
liberal, a classical liberal, a moderate who leans a slightly left on social issues, but basically I'm more of like a balanced or moderate libertarian with some nationalistic views because I, I think it's totally fine for countries to be for their country, pro their country, and take care of their country, but not like in a toxic way. So like I'm sort of a mishmash of political ideologies. I take each individual uh, belief system or idea or policy or ideology individually and I analyze it individually and then I make up my mind whether that's something I'm for or pro or against and sometimes my ideas swing more right because society has made things like critical thinking or free speech or not allowing children to pick their sex at five years old somehow a conservative t talking point and sometimes my beliefs swing, swing left like I don't have a problem with sex work as long as you are old enough and understanding the long-term causes and effects of your behavior. I am pro-LGBTQ. I love gay pride parades, but I think they're not appropriate for children. You know what I mean? I'm pro-trans, right? I just don't think children should be able to start transitioning at such a young age. So like I take each individual thing and I like use my common sense and my critical thinking skills and I decide which one I think is okay or not. I don't buy this whole like, I'm a Republican or I'm a liberal or I'm a progressive or I'm a socialist or whatever. And so I'm just gonna believe every single ideology that matches my label without actually analyzing and dissecting each thing first. First, I feel like you're a follower or a sheep when you do that, no matter what part side of the political label you're on. And it's sad that centralism or moderate, being a moderate is kind of seen as like wishy-washy or fit, fence sitting, but because most people are moderate, most people have nuanced or in a gray area ideas, but I think again, we live in an age of like tribalism. You have to pick your side and you just have to be like hardcore that side no matter what. But it's like, I think that's just stupid and I think that's lazy thinking. But I definitely agree with Bill Maher that the left or progressives have lost the freaking mind. I feel like moderate libertarian conservatives, Republicans kind of stayed in place and maybe expanded a bit when it comes to their ideas, but the left is fucking, they've gone off the deep end and I think that's because of years and years of years of never really being corrected or pushed back. When if you are conservative or Republican, you're constantly pushed back. Your ideas are constantly tested or, or, or questioned and you have to constantly like, know your shit because you're going to constantly debate it where I feel like progressives are kind of like can just say anything off the fucking wall and it's kind of accepted within their sort of echo chambers and so that shit just get more and more ridiculous because no one's ever being like that doesn't make sense anywho that's enough all right we're gonna get back into it well people like you are very important to people like me because you represent what means what it means to me to be liberal what it means to me to be left-wing because you're just a normal person who cares about people's rights and wants a certain amount of freedom and wants the you know, people to get along and work things out amicably. Right. But the polarization of this country has made it so that people like you are rare. It's weird. It's like that's what I used to think of when I thought of the left. I thought of like professors and you know intellectuals and these these people that would sit down and work through things with the understanding that free speech is one of, like one of the most important aspects of communication possible and communication is everything. Communication is how we work things out. Like this idea of not talking to people you disagree with. Well, guess what? That just galvanizes them. They just get hardened and they move further and further away and we get more and more uh, associated with this idea of left and right and uh, good and bad and you know, one and zero and this side does not agree with anything that side says. That's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And if you're out there doing it, it gives people hope. And it's not just we are saying common sense. You do have common sense. But more importantly, you have courage. Because courage allows you to speak your mind whether you're right or wrong. Uh, courage allows you to take a chance and you're seeing the wave of people that are moving in a certain direction It doesn't necessarily make sense and you're like, hey, what the fuck is going on? And everybody's like Finally someone's saying it on TV right. because maybe someone yeah. said it at a cocktail party Maybe someone right. said it at a barbecue, mm -hmm. but they're not fucking saying it on HBO until you say it on HBO Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, it means I, a lot. I always say, you know, there's levels of courage there's like yeah i mean i will i will take that compliment as long as i can also say but there's like 
Marines. Love yeah, you're not, a, you're not a Navy <laughs> yeah, yeah, SEAL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, exactly. You're not no. even a woman I'm, about to give birth. I, I, I'm in the D League. <laughs> yes. You know, in the D League, I have a lot of courage, but I'm well, not playing in the upper league. What you have but is I, honesty. But thank you. Yes, you and, have honesty. Well, it's, and, that, it's, and people know that, and that's right. why your show works. And that's also, I always feel like, what my bond with the audience is. Yes. Like you don't have, when I started uh, way back on Politically Incorrect almost 30 years ago, um, People said, you know, this show will never work because a TV host can never reveal his politics. I mean, Johnny Carson never right. did. Leno didn't. David Letterman. You, they never said, I'm voting for this guy. Whereas, I mean, you obviously know who all the late night hosts are for now. Right. I mean, it's a completely one-sided thing. They have to pander to the liberal audience, which is watches them. It's, it's, so, it's so reverse of when I started. It's bonkers. When you couldn't be political. And now you couldn't survive, apparently, in late night television unless you are political, unless the audience knows exactly that you're, and I would put Saturday Night Live in this too. It's, uh, I think Elon Musk uh, took them to task. He said, it doesn't seem like a show that's about comedy anymore so much as it, a, it is about declaring some woke doctrine. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having people, the people who go to those shows and uh, are in the, I guess, where they film them and stuff. Uh, I, my audience was was too doctrinated for a while. We we have a much better audience now because we kind of got rid of the groaners, the people for whom I was always too politically incorrect. And I was like, I've been doing this forever. The names of the shows, politically incorrect, real time. And you still come to this show and groan when I say something too real? What fucking show did you think you were coming to? Because they do film The Price is Right in the same studio. <laughs> do you think that the way it's going right now with late night television where you, you everyone has to... Um, stopping it there. Okay, so I agree that there is a level of bravery or courage that Bill Maher has, but I think what mo where he has more is integrity, where he's not going to bend on his values or his beliefs or his principles for a check or just to keep an audience pleased. And I'm glad that he acknowledged that his audience was becoming quite progressive because he was that four years of, you know, Trump derangement syndrome that he still very much suffer from, he catered to that audience, and now that Trump's out of the office, he, that's no longer the talking point to a lot of the talk show hosts now, and so he sort of got rid of those people um, for the most part, so I'm glad they, he acknowledged that, and it is true, it's not there's just late night host that has to have a, like, has to speak or state their political ideology or what cult or tribe they're a part of, but I feel like that's anyone that's in the public eye now. It's like if you're asked what you believe and you don't have an opinion, you're almost like attacked. I remember when Demi Lovato, before she went off the rails, when she was first asked what her sexuality was and she actually refused to say it, people got really upset about her not talking about her sexuality or the fact that she was a bi or something like that because she wouldn't have a, a, a stance on an LGBTQ or queer ideas and now she completely dove head first into it. But it's almost like if you don't have a belief system, if you don't tell the audience what it is that you believe in, they either, because progressivism is so, so immensely accepted as a main narrative, especially in entertainment, if you don't say what it is, that they just assume you're some hateful right-wing Trump supporter and then it's like attack you, right? You can't just keep it to yourself or be apolitical because a lot of people also believe if you're apolitical that you're unempathetic and you don't care about the woes of others because you're too privileged to give a shit, right? And so it's just, yeah, that's kind of where we are now. And plus everybody thinks everything's political because it's the new religion because a lot of people who are very religious think everything is somehow attached to religion or spirituality or God or something like that. If you have a cold, it's because you, you send if your car busted the tires because you must not be behaving in the way God wants you to. It's the same thing with like this progressive idea that everything's attached to politics so you have to be political because everything's attached to it, right? Your skin color, your race, your gender, your sexuality, your everything's attached to it. And so how dare you not have a belief system that you tell us so we can cherry pick everything you say and so we can judge you or decide to cancel you or whatever. So I agree with that. And yeah, like Saturday Night Live has not only become like a political soapbox, but it's also just long for a long time stopped being funny. Anyway, let's continue. Is that what the audience wants or is that what the executives in the studio wants? Are they like who is are they one step behind 
Like, what, where, where is the the mandate yes, coming from? Is it yeah. the person who's the host who says, you know what, I know works in this town. If I want to keep working, I have to be like outwardly well, left leaning, progressive, political. Look, it's. I think it's coming from both because corporations in America now um, are they're leaning know, in. Or what? They're leaning into woke, <laughs> hardcore. They're they're, they're petrified yeah. of some kind of backlash. I mean, you see with with Disney now. I mean, Disney, one of the most gay friendly companies that we've had in a very long time, um, as they should be. All companies should be gay friendly. But Disney sort of they had gay days. Yeah. At Disney, what is it? World Land? I don't know. I'm not a Disney. I think gay. it was you'll, the L.A. one, right? Never find I think me it's in land. it. Disneyland is the original. That's right. That's Disney LA. World is in Florida. Right. You'll never find me sitting in a teacup, Joe. Okay. So <laughs> I love teacups. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he says in in my category of things that only children used to do that now adults do. I mean, uh, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said, you know, I'm going to Disneyland, and I'm like, with your kids? No, we're just going. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, you know, there is that. There is. Corporations, I think, yes, are always going to want to. And look, I'm glad they are progressive thinking. Of course, like with everything on the left these days, they just take it too far. But I think it's coming from the audience more because the audience who goes to a taping of Saturday Night Live or a show like that, they're youngish and, you know, they. Um, they believe what they believe. A lot of the things I also believe. Uh, but it's it's sort of an unexamined, like, they don't know too much about politics. They just know that, and again, you mentioned Trump doing this. Like, he mm-hmm. was so awful that it's just very easy to turn off to the details and go, well, I'm with the Democrats and the left. See, I told you, can't let go of that Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know if I agree with the whole, like, it's the audience, because I feel like... If you talk to most people, they also think this shit is ridiculous, right? Offline, in real life, most people feel like this shit is ridiculous. I think it's propaganda. I think it is the propaganda first and then the ideology that these people are now accepting and sort of swallowing because of the propaganda is what happens. I don't think it's like the audience demanded talking about three-year-olds and five-year-olds trading into sex and then the the brand started or the corporation started saying yes. I think the corporation sort of wiggled this shit in and then the fear of being canceled or the fear of being on the wrong side of history is influences people's talking points in public anyway. And yeah, Disney is gay friendly and they very uh, much lean so progressively left that they became okay with grooming ideology. Okay, groomer. Anyway guys, tell me what you think of what they said, what I said in the comment section below. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to get the notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you like to support this channel any further, you can donate. My PayPal and Cash App link is in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course it helps, but you don't have to. You can just like, comment, subscribe. Another great way to support this channel is either join my brand new membership program, different levels, different tiers, different perks, or you can visit my brand new merch shop. Links down below. I also have a second travel vlog channel. I travel as a lifestyle or I live abroad. If you'd like to know where I am in the world, you can go to the description box below and also in the comment section. Hit the link, go subscribe to my travel vlog channel, and or follow me on travel Instagram. My stories is usually with most of the date. And you guys have an amazing day. Bye!